one of the challenges of any large organism or any human, any animal, is to live in an environment that is overrun with little tiny organisms called bacteria. If the growth of bacteria is allowed to proceed without anything stopping it, the numbers of bacteria that we have on us would completely wipe us out, would kill us in a few hours. So our bodies, animals' bodies, plants even, they have to have special protections that either stop bacteria from growing or kill bacteria so that they don't overwhelm us. So the primary way that animals and plants and we control bacteria is with a special set of molecules called antimicrobial peptides or AMPs. And AMPs selectively kill bacteria by uh, being attracted to the surface of bacteria and then flipping over and that destroys or at least causes defects in the outside of the bacteria which causes them to die. This is nature's way of protecting animals, plants, humans. And we would like to be able to use those same protections that nature has developed in controlling bacterial growth when we have injuries, when we have infections. Because even though we have protections, each of us has these AMPs, there's still a problem. When we get a cut, when we get injured, we can still get infection. Our natural defenses get overwhelmed by the bacteria. That is, the bacteria start growing too fast. We get inflammation, that is the redness and swelling, pain. These are all responses to infection. But there's a problem with using AMPs. If we use one of the AMPs that's found in humans, it would cost a huge amount of money for even small amounts of the material. But being scientists, we can look at the structure of these AMPs and design molecules that do the same kind of thing, but instead are simpler, that are easier to make, that we can make in large amounts. This is one of those rare instances in any scientist's career where the first thing we tried worked. And I can still vividly remember getting a phone call late at night from one of my graduate students trying to explain to me that we had killed all of the bacteria. Now, we didn't expect these molecules to have good antimicrobial activities, but it turns out they did, right? And this was the first indication that the design that we had come upon worked the very first time. We've made molecules that are mimics, that is, they do the same thing as AMPs. That is, that they selectively associate or grab on to the surfaces of bacteria and then flip over. This causes the bacteria to lose their protection in their cell walls and their membranes and it causes them to die. It isn't an inhibitor like, like antibiotics. It has the same killing mechanism as your body and your system has. All animals, plants, insects have it. And it, it's a mimic of that that's on your skin, in your mouth, in your body. That's, that's one of the reasons that it's so safe. There's a, a lot of resistance now to all antibiotics. There's a resistance to a lot of the disinfectants we use. And the, the bacteria now can mutate. They fortify themselves in what we call a biofilm. We think that's a problem around water in animals. We think it's a problem where there's feed in a dog trough where you see the slimy film. That's a biofilm. Even in the wounds, we develop biofilms. That's probably why the wound doesn't heal and we get a, a lot of scar tissue there. A biofilm protects the inner layers, kind of like a fortress. The way this product kills, it's a physical kill where it actually drills through or disrupts the membranes all the way through the biofilm. We think in the environment, if we can slow down the bacterial load on these small young foals or calves or pigs or whatever the animal might be, 
to give that little immune system a little bit better shot, then we can avoid a lot of the sickness caused by these pathogens. In my opinion, um, Dr. Savage's development of, of this technology was revolutionary because it, it kills bacteria in a completely different um, uh, action than anything we've ever seen before, at least anything I've ever seen before. And from what we've seen, there's nothing out there like it other than what's in nature. It's the way nature kills bacteria, it's the way our bodies kill bacteria. And, and that's the way that I want to be able to, to solve the bacterial problems that we deal with here. We're in the center of the thoroughbred world in, in Lexington, Kentucky, and, and Root and Riddle is, is one of the big practices in the area. Been open since 1985. We have the best surgeons in the world. Our specialists are second to none. We have the expertise and the knowledge here that is unparalleled. Lance called me and he asked about it, and I, I said, Lance, there's so many of these products that, that come across all the time. He said, well, look into this for me. And I, I read some of the research and showed it to one of our, our medicine people, and, and we both agreed that there was some real promise there. It had a lot of research done by a university. So I called him back and I said, you know, this one's a little bit different. Anytime that we can get away from, from overusing the antibiotics that we do have um, with, with something that, that shows no resistance, I think that's important, um, not just for us as veterinarians, but anybody in the, in the health world would be interested in that. One of the things that we're looking at is um, putting it on surgical implants to, to keep them from getting infected, keeping the biofilm off of them. And that, that showed some promise for us. We're, we're looking at doing some intrauterine therapies in, in the brood mares, and then we're continuing to look at uh, skin diseases that we've been able to treat with it. Rude and Riddle's very interested in, in th this type of product and, and alternative treatments to the, to the therapies that we've got that have been good for us, but that we would like to move away from using so many antibiotics and um, it's, it's better for everybody. Currently there's a world crisis in health. Uh, part of it is linked to uh, bacterial infections in animals that are part of the food chain that then gets eaten by consumers and there is a causal link uh, between those bacteria and, and what affects uh, human health. Uh, antibiotics really only became commonly available during and after World War II, the first one being penicillin. It's hard for us to really appreciate these days, but it was as though somebody had a cure for cancer. The problem with penicillin and most conventional antibiotics that have followed it is that they will inhibit the growth of the bacteria, but they won't kill it. The paradox of antibiotic use is the more you use antibiotics, the less effective they become because we are teaching the bacteria how to become resistant. We're stressing them. It's like an exercise program for bacteria. They're becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And now we're at a point where there are strains that are developed that no antibiotics work against at all. The head of the World Health Organization basically said uh, we are entering the post-antibiotic era because our cupboard of antibiotics is running bare and the bacteria are becoming stronger and stronger. We have very few remedies to address these multi-drug resistant strains of bacteria and uh, these technologies offer tremendous uh, promise uh, for being a, a way out of the dilemma that we are currently in. What's the difference with this technology? They eradicate. They're lethal, they're cidal, there are no survivors. So there's no chance for a second generation to develop mutated forms that are now resistant. Nature has evolved these types of compounds over millions and millions of years and has come up with a mechanism of action that has proven to be extremely effective. We're attacking the bacterial membrane, depolarizing it, I and E flux, the inner guts of the bacteria spill out and the bacteria dies. Uh, there are now over 30 scientific poster presentations, over 30 peer-reviewed journal articles on the technology. So this is very well documented in solid science behind it. This has been years of work in my laboratory that is collaborative with laboratories in the U.S. and in countries all over ranging from Brazil to Japan to Belgium to France. In every instance, we see that they have the same mechanism of action.
They selectively target bacterial membranes. They cause permeabilization of the membranes and transient pores, which cause the bacteria to, to die. Some of the horses that we've trained and developed have gone on to be uh, good horses. We uh, raised and sold Looking at Lucky, that was champion two-year-old and three-year-old here a few years ago. We bought, trained, and sold uh, Thunder Gulfs that won the Kentucky Derby. And uh, so we've been fortunate that we've been around uh, some horses that have been quite successful in the business. As I <clears throat> looked at the science that was available and started using some, some of the product personally on my horses, uh, I began to see that this might be a once-in-a-lifetime product. It's a totally new concept. We've not seen this in a product that, that I'm familiar with. The way it mimics AMP and the way it was developed it just was, was phenomenal. And here's a product that, in, in my opinion, has done more so far, still things to prove, than most of the high-powered antibiotics can do. I've had, I think, fantastic results. A horse was sent to me. He had punctured his guttural pouch area from the outside with a steel post. It was four or five inches deep. We healed it up in a matter of about 18 or 20 days, and I just thought that was phenomenal. We found that wound healing time has been dramatically uh, decreased, particularly burns things like this that are sometimes hard to heal. Uh, we had great results with skin disease, which can be quite resistant sometimes, all the different fungal and interrelated bacterial infections that are with it. So we had some success there. I'm particularly impressed of the non-toxic effect of it. I've seen people use it as a spray in eyes and with great results. It's biodegradable in the environment and I have not found an area where the toxicity has been uh, a problem. I see applications uh, widespread for, for uh, disinfectants around animal facilities, for, for mastitis, for all kinds of things. Shelf life of poultry, hang of carcasses, and it's uh, the results have been phenomenal. So many products come and go. Uh, they'll, they'll be on the market and uh, a number of veterinarians will use them, we'll use them ourselves and, and yeah, they, they work pretty well and pretty soon you're on another one and on another one, but the, the response I've had has been phenomenal. It's the biggest thing that I've seen come along. It's been an interesting product to use. I've enjoyed having the ability to, to have something to put into wounds, flush uteruses and joints with. It's been a good product for us to use that way. The places that I found that, that it works real well is, is in wound lavage. Adding the medicine to a solution bag of, of saline and to really clean wounds, especially deep muscle wounds, puncture wounds, things that we have a terrible time getting cleaned out. Sometimes on some of these horses we only get one opportunity to put medicine in the joint. It's, it's nice to have a little confidence that there's a antibacterial product that we can put into the joint they'll kind of hang around longer than, than just uh, in and out lavage. Other places where it works good is in, in wounds uh, over the point of the hawk and different places where it doesn't have a great blood supply. So you're given antibiotics systemically and so delivery of that product uh, to those wounds is sometimes limited. And so having a product that we can lavage directly into the wound and, you know, and topically apply that thing periodically on a day-to-day -day basis at least lets you know that you've done everything you can to, to try and eliminate the infection in the in the wound. The mare we had that came in, uh, she'd been barren for a couple of years and we cultured the uterus and found environmental contaminants and other uh, bacterial species that weren't conducive to her getting pregnant. Uh, in the lavage we used uh, the Pure Shield and uh, it cleared the infection and, and uh, the subsequent culture was clean and she got pregnant so we thought that was a pretty good success. This gives us an opportunity to decrease the pathogen load to where we can pinpoint use our antibiotics in a way that then would be I mean, more beneficial. I've not seen any adverse reactions to it. I got it on my skin, got it on different places. Splash it around a lot when we're trying to lavage wounds out and it, I've not seen any problem with it at all. I wouldn't have any reservations using this at all. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Um, 
we've had good luck with it. I was a little apprehensive in some of the places that I put the put the medicine, but uh, I had such success with it with with one time application of the product. This is a mimic to what is controlled bacteria for plants, animals, and the human race here on Earth. Everywhere we've been with it, we've had remarkable results. It truly is one of the, the most beneficial molecules to come. I really believe the people that develop this will they'll receive a Nobel Prize for it someday. It'll change the way we do things in the animal world. It's changed generations of animal husbandry in our family. The way, we, the way we do things with our animals now. There's a lot less stress because we have a lot less sickness. And in our fields of use in the horse business, a sick horse never amounts to a great horse. And we're, we're literally looking for the gold medal winners. Personally, to be able to work with compounds and to see what they do in animals and in humans and to see that they're, that they're potentially changing lives and even changing industries is very exciting to me and, and I often just thrilled with the idea that we've been involved in making some of these discoveries. We've been able to take a page out of nature's book and work as well, if not better, than uh, nature's own remedy for this problem. And whenever you can walk in nature's footsteps, you're likely to get to the right destination. You know, we're very interested in, in exploring these products. It's, it's, it's new science, and we want to be at the forefront of, of looking at, new, at the new products that we do. That, a local vet here told me a, a case of strangles is usually six to eight weeks um, before it's all gone. And, and uh, this was hair growing back on day 14. Pretty impressive. I would recommend this to veterinarians, and I think any veterinarian that tries this product, or any animal caretaker that tries this product, I think is going to be impressed with their results and is going to uh, want to use more of the product. Uh, everyone I've given product to, and every time I've tried the product, uh, it's been a favorable situation. It's been an impressive product, and I really have, have felt like it's a great product. We use it quite extensively. We offer it to clients. We sell it across the counter. We appreciate that the, you know, the clients are now starting to come to us wanting the, wanting the product. I have a tiny little bottle of the Pure Shield in my car at all times, and in my purse, because you never know when you're going to be in a place and you're going to need it, or somebody else you know is going to have this situation and you're just you're going to want to give it to them. So I keep it with me all the time because realistically, you never know when you're going to need it.